Hello everybody, I hope you're well. I hope you had a great break over the holiday. Um, and yeah, welcome back to school. It's November. Oh, it's a bit, it's a bit, it seems a bit chillier today, uh, but at least it hasn't been too rainy and you've managed to go outside. Um, my assembly today is about uh, one of our values, which is hope, which is about looking to the future positively and planning how to get there. Um, and so, yeah, we'll come on to that. I just want to show you something, though, uh, to get your minds thinking. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful scene? So this is in South Wales, uh, which is where I'm from. That was where Year 6 are going next week, South Wales. Um, and it's an area of the country called the Brecon Beacons. Uh, it's a beautiful um, area. It looks like this. Oh, don't you think that's beautiful? Now, it is beautiful um, because we can see the mountains. But actually, it shouldn't look like this. And what's happened is, is a man, not me, but other people in the past have come along and they've done something to this, this land. What they've done is they've chopped down trees. This area should look like this. So different. Um, in fact, the whole of South Wales should be what's called a rainforest. Uh, it rains a lot in South Wales. Um, and we do have rainforests. We have some rainforests in this country, but they're very small now. Uh, and they look like this. It's an area which is a forest which has uh, an above average amount of rainfall. Uh, and that's what South Wales has. Amazing, isn't it? Just to think that um, it could look, look, look like this again if we planted trees. And that's what we'd need to do. So um, the reason why I'm talking about hope today is because... Um, somebody in the world saw something like this happening and they stopped it because they could see a way out. They hoped that things could get better. Um, right, I want you to, just now, I want you to imagine for me a scientist, okay? Somebody who you think is a scientist. Have a big think about that. Hmm, what do they look like? Now, I'm going to hazard a guess that you thought of somebody who looks a bit like this. Okay? White coat. Often think of a man um, working in a lab doing sciencey stuff. Well, it's true, he is a scientist, but that's not what all scientists look like. And the person I want to speak about today is a scientist, and she looks like this. Now, I bet you didn't think of that when you thought of a scientist. So the book I'm going to read today is about this person here. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get started. Here's the book. I'm going to shrink myself down a little bit just to get out of the way so I'm not mm, too, in, too obvious. It's called Wangari's Trees of Peace, a true story from Africa. Um, and it's written by Jeanette Winter. Uh, she writes and illustrates it. It's a biography, though. So it's a biography, which means it's a it's a a, a, a retelling of somebody's life. Okay, it's not made up; it's real. Wangari's Trees of Peace, a true story from Africa. The earth was naked. For me, the mission was to try to cover it with green. And that's a quote from Wangari. Wangari lives under an umbrella of green trees in the shadow of Mount Kenya in Africa. She watches the birds in the forest where she and her mother go to gather firewood for cooking. And she helps harvest the sweet potatoes, sugarcane and maize from the rich soil. Wangari shines in school. And when she grows tall like the trees in the forest, she wins a scholarship to study in America and she becomes a scientist. Six years later, her studies are over. Wangari returns to her Kenya home and sees a change. What has happened? She wonders. Where are the trees? Wangari sees women bent from hauling firewood miles and miles from home. She sees, see, she sees barren lands where no crops grow. Where are the birds? Thousands of trees have been cut down to make room for buildings, but no one planted new trees to take their place. With all, will all of Kenya become a desert? She wonders as her tears fall. Wangari thinks about the barren land. I can begin to replace some of the lost trees here in my own backyard. 
one tree at a time. She starts by planting nine seedlings. Watching the seedlings take root gives Wangari the idea to plant more, to start a farm for baby trees, a nursery. In an open space, she plants row after row of the tiny trees. Uh, that's what a, a, a place where you grow young plants is called a nursery. A bit like a place where you grow young children is called a nursery. Next, Wangari convinces the village women that planting trees is a good thing. She gives each one a seedling. Our lives will be better when we have trees again. You'll see we are planting the seeds of hope. The women spread out over their village, planting tiny trees in long rows, like a green belt stretching over the land. The government men laugh. <laughs> women can't do this, they say. It takes trained foresters to plant trees. The women ignore the laughter and they keep planting. Wangari pays them a small amount for each seedling still living after three months, their first earnings ever. So she pays the, the women who planted the trees um, an amount of money for every seedling. So every tree that they plant, if it's still alive after three months, they get money. So that's a real incentive, isn't it, to make sure those trees grow. Word travels like wind rustling through leaves about the green returning to Wangari's village. Soon other women in other villages and other towns and cities in Kenya are planting long rows of seedlings too. But the cutting continues. Wangari stands tall as an oak to protect the old trees still remaining. We need a park more than we need an office tower. It's great as well. I like this uh, part of the book because um, they sh she stands tall uh, and the simile that they use is as an oak, like an oak tree. Um, so it's a, the, it, the metaphor, metaphorical language used is about trees. The government men disagree. Wangari blocks their way, so they hit her with clubs. They call her a troublemaker and they put her in jail. And still she stands tall. Right is right, even if you're alone. But Wangari is not alone. Talk of the trees spreads over Africa, like ripples in Lake Victoria. More women hear the talk and plant even more seedlings in longer and longer rows. The seedlings take root and grow tall until there are over 30 million trees where there were none. The umbrella of green in Kenya returns. Women walk tall, their backs straight. For now they can gather firewood closer to home. The land is no longer barren. Sweet potatoes, sugarcane and maize grow again in the rich red earth. The whole world hears of Wangari's trees and of her army of women who planted them. And if you were to climb to the very top of Mount Kenya today, you would see the millions of trees growing below you and the green Wangari brought back to Africa. So, that's the end of my story. Um, it's definitely a story of hope, isn't it? Uh, because the whole point of this story is, is it's about somebody who could see something was wrong and hope that they could change it and make the world a better place. And they did that. And they did that fantastically well. Um, I think that Wangari, Wangari Mati is an amazing woman. Um, and she's a scientist, you know. So it, the reason, one of the reasons why I'm talking about scientists as well, though, is that next week... Um, it's World Science Day um, and um, we're going to be thinking about scientists. But it's really important that we remember that scientists aren't all white men. In fact, scientists come from all over the world and from many different places. And all of you, um, if you wanted to, you could be scientists when you grow up. The great thing about scientists is, is that scientists change the world. They make the world a better place, or they can make the world a better place. Um, and you could be one of those people to make the world a better place. Oh, wouldn't that be fantastic? Okay, um, that's my assembly. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, make sure that you are throwing, following the three shows. Show integrity, show respect, and show excellence. Um, we've run out of excellent stickers, but don't worry, I've ordered some more. We've got 6,000 of them uh, coming into school. Last term we got through 
2,000, so I thought I'd better order some more. Um, so hopefully um, they'll all be given out to you nice and soon. Okay, take lots of care. See you all soon. Bye.